Good evening, Drew. There he is. Oh, well, there I am. How are you doing? Oh, buddy. It's been a rough couple weeks. Yeah. 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 Uh, we don't have to really go into it here. I mean, people who know me know what's going on, but I'm just glad that... Um, I'm just glad that things are starting to calm down, even though it's still kind of hard for everybody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it kind of, kind of a bummer week. And plus like <laughs> work is absolutely kicking my ass right now. <laughs> of, of course. Yeah. Those things. Yeah. Those two things usually end up, uh, happening at the same time in life. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Where do we want to, where do we want to start tonight? We didn't record last week because of things. Yeah. I, um, I, I want, I want to start with, uh, how you and Elden Ring are faring. <laughs> I assume good. You love the game. You're like, you're putting hundreds of hours into it. You, you're getting good. Uh, <laughs> so you know how you were wrong about vampire survivors? Uh huh. I might've been wrong about Elden Ring. Okay. You like it? I like it okay um it is a very difficult game mm -hmm. um I, I still have problems with it um but i did not give up i was very close to uninstalling it the last time that we talked about it mm -hmm. i was very very close to uninstalling it but i sort of pressed on um here here's what i really like about this game you were a fan of breath of the wild correct yeah yeah what was your favorite part of breath of the wild <sighs> I mean, I think it's, I want to say the same thing that everybody says. The fact that you could just go anywhere, like you could just pick a direction and walk and there was always something interesting to to find. Yeah. So Elden Ring has that same vibe. You can't go everywhere right away, uh, but you could certainly try to go where you want, but you're probably going to get murdered <laughs> and it's, okay. and it's not going to be pretty. Um, Here's the thing. The sense of exploration in that game is outstanding. I love walking around or riding my goat horse and looking for things and just stumbling upon something. Mm -hmm. I have managed to sort of meander around that map and stumble into various things. That game does not put guardrails on you. If you wander into an area that you are clearly not prepared for, both in terms of your character level or items, or if you're missing like a key, the game will let you get only so far before it's just like, nope, you're, you're not going to beat this. You're not going to beat this enemy. Just don't even try. Just, you know, run around them or, or go away. <laughs> you know, like it's, <laughs> it, it, it's just how it is. What's fascinating about this game to me is it number one that I have stuck with it as long as I have? Because by similar attempts to play other Dark Souls games, I have never lasted this long. My total playtime mm. of Elden Ring right now is about 36 hours, which okay. is pretty respectable for one playthrough. Yeah. And as someone who really doesn't know where he's going or what he's <laughs> doing, uh, it's going pretty good. Now I have had help. Let me be let me be perfectly clear. I have had help in the form of my friend Arthur, who is just an Elden Ring fanatic he <laughs> has helped me early on defeat a couple bosses that i was really struggling with as i was sort of learning the ropes but after i sorted after i sort of made it over a couple diff difficulty hikes or difficulty spikes i should say i have stuck with it to the point where i have managed to explore and advance the story to about mid game is what he is is what he has told me he doesn't spoil things for me mm -hmm. but he's basically told me that i'm approaching mid game now the game is is just obnoxiously obtuse. Like <laughs> they don't, they really don't do a good job of explaining what's going on or the lore. It's a lot of context clues. You know, you sort of have to figure things out by yourself. I have started to read about some of the lore while also avoiding spoilers, which is really hard to do because the story is so ingrained with the events of the game that it's hard to find the lore entries that don't spoil things. So mm. after I finish the game, I, I, let me put it to you this way. I can't explain to you what's happening. I just know that my <laughs> guy doesn't seem to, I mean, my guy dies, but he doesn't stay dead. Right. Um, there's all sorts of things that are trying to kill you uh, that are golden. Um, sometimes... Sometimes you go to a place and people help you. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, that's that's all I know. But 
I would say that the game is still very frustrating. I have, mm-hmm. I think the last time we talked, I expressed I expressed frustration in the fact that I played the game for forty five minutes and made no progress. Yes, yeah. I have I have made it past that point, and now what I'm discovering is is I will play for a few hours at a time, and I will make it very deep in the paint into a certain area, and it's just like I will run up against a boss that I just cannot beat. And I can't, I I legitimately can't tell if it's because I need to get good or I'm vastly under leveled for what I'm trying to do. Um, And the the game does a couple annoying things where they will sprinkle in optional bosses that are incredibly difficult. And what was suggested to me was, is, hey, those bosses are optional. So if you don't want to fight them, just, just go around them. (laughs) <laughs> just, 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 just leave them be. You don't have to fight them. <laughs> and you know what? They're right. Like you can just go past them and, oh, okay, here, piece of candy over here. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. Right, yeah. It's like, okay, we'll just not fight that guy right now. Uh, it's been a little bit of that. The game also does an annoying thing where like you'll fight, a, you'll, you'll come to this boss fight and the boss totally kicks your ass the first time. And then you come back and you start to learn his patterns or, or their patterns or her patterns or whatever. And you start to get a little bit good, but they still beat you. And then you'll do you'll do such a good job and then games like oops what if you fought two of them at the same time <laughs> that sucks oh. there was one fight in particular where i was like i came back and i i have learned to be more brave and sure of myself in fights where it's like instead of running around waiting for an opening being aggressive getting in close like really taking it to them and dodging at the right times and i was doing so good and then all of a sudden i was like wait why is there a second boss health bar oh no oh no <laughs> So it's shit like that. Um, my stated goal is to finish this game before the new Destiny expansion, which is at the end of the month. Uh, we're recording okay. this in February. I feel like I could get there. I Just from watching TikToks and watching reviews of this game, I know that there is an incredibly obnoxious boss fight in my future that I could conceivably get to this boss in the next week. Whether or not I manage to beat that boss over the course of the week where... I know people that are good at this game where they have fought this boss for a week and not one, right? It's oh, just like my goodness. The that difficulty sounds... spike, yeah. Um, but anyway, it's it's going it's going good. I have calmed down a little bit. I have learned to embrace the fact that you are going to die. It's okay to lose some progress. You like runes, you, you will get you will get more runes, right? <laughs> um and there's just a lot of obscure lore that is actually the, the sense of wonder that you get from going to some of these places and like the the art direction, not the graphics, but the actual art direction of the game mm-hmm. is very fascinating. It's somehow fantasy and gothic and like noir and just all these like a like a mishmash of different flavors of game. And like just wandering around trying to figure out how I'm gonna get to this next place and all of a sudden coming across a tomb. And I'm like, oh, I'll go in there, right? And then you see the you see the save point, and you're like, oh no, <laughs> I know I know what's about to happen, right? But then sometimes, like, I do really good. Um, I'm learning some of the system, so I, I don't know. It's a really long winded way to say that it's actually pretty good. Now I don't know if I'll replay it right away because I know, it, and you've t- you've talked about this in in the context of Zachary, where it's like people oh. want to try different builds. Oh yeah. He'd- yeah he just throws I mean, himself at it yeah yeah i'm just i'm just a strength boy like i care about like two stats i'm not i'm keeping it simple but as i've progressed through the game i have found all sorts of cool weapons that i have and spells that i'm just like i'll i can't use that i'll never my my big dummy will never be able to use that right right because it's it's kind of like they have requirements to use certain things and you know maybe in another playthrough i i could do it but yeah, no, it's 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 weirdly good. Or maybe I'm just in an abusive relationship and I haven't like figured it out yet. I don't know. Yeah, see, listening to you talk, I just like it. Uh, it sounds awful. It sounds awful. Yeah. It it was very <laughs> rough at first because every single game I have played has taught me that even if a game is hard to keep trying something, the the conceit of these games are, hey. It's okay if you can't do this. Why don't you go do something else for a little bit and come back later? 
but not knowing where that other thing is <laughs> and you you have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Now I could I could I could totally play this game with a wiki open on my iPad if I wanted to. And it's weird to hear me complain about the things the way I'm complaining about them. If that that's the answer is to go do that, right? But at the mm -hmm. same time, there's almost a little something in not doing that. Um, but I will say there's a lot of things you can miss. Like Arthur has basically tapped me on the shoulder and said, you know, hey, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but you might want to go back to this like gazebo you saw in a distance that was off the path and talk to the one NPC on there that's gonna send you on an ambiguous quest. Because uh, if you don't do it now, you won't be able to do it later, and it gives you a really good item. There's a lot of little shit you can miss, hmm. right? And I and maybe and maybe that's the intent. Like you have to do that and then come back later after in another playthrough and do the hundred percent completion. I don't know, but it's good. It's it's really it's really really good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. So, all right. Um, uh, ugh, sorry. You uh, okay? I, I listen. I know. I know if it's not for you, right? It's, yeah. I don't think it's. I don't think it's for me. No. I didn't. No. But here, here's the last thing I will leave you with. I was convinced it wasn't for me, and I was wrong. So I don't know, man, maybe like, I'm, I'm sure Zach is playing this with a controller, right? No, no mouse and keyboard. Are you fucking kidding me? Mm -hmm. Dude, no. that is, if yeah. he beat that game. Oh, multiple times. On mouse and keyboard? Multiple times. Your son's a god. Like the, 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 the keyboard and mouse controls are god awful. Yeah. The controls themselves are a little bit of, uh, the camera controls in, in general have gotten me killed more times than I want to admit with like target lock on and shit like that. Maybe I need to try it on mouse and keyboard because I I'm playing with a controller. Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't know. Like if you, like, I know it's relatively easy to hook a PlayStation controller up to a computer. You should, you should oh, legitimately try it. He has, uh, I, he, I mean, yeah, he has an Xbox controller he uses for some things, but yeah, no, I don't know. Like I, I just, I don't, I don't think I am going to try it. Okay. I don't, I don't think I respect just, just, I just, I just don't, I don't think it's, I don't, think I held out. I, I held out me. a very long time. I bought yeah. it on sale. I am past the point of returning it. I'm going to force okay. myself to beat it. Okay. Some of like the cutscenes and the lore is like some of the things that I've seen have actually been pretty badass. Hmm. And I'm like in this, I'm like between two different areas right now where I'm not entirely sure if I should be in either one of them. One of them's like this big underground, like death city place. And it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. And there's these big iron maidens that like eat you. I don't know. I'm saying too much, but I don't know. <laughs> You're not going to spoil the game for me. I'm like, I'm never going to, I'm never going to play it. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. When we last recorded mm -hmm. in the, what I call the after show, mm -hmm. the part, the part for me and you that we don't record, you mentioned that you bought something ridiculous. I did buy something ridiculous. I have, the show notes have been, <laughs> the, the show notes have been in situ for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. not clicked on any links. Okay. Right. I'm about to click on a link. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool 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 saw bro what am i looking at here uh, do, you, do you do you see do you see the thing you see the thing i see a box uh-huh that has metal uh-huh it's, it's uh, and then a record on it it's made out of aluminum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is this so uh that is the project vce vacuum record cleaner <laughs> I don't have the I don't have the words. <laughs> I don't have the words. So obviously, you know, I'm going like down the rabbit hole with you're going, with, you're going, you're, you're, you're going through some stuff. Yep. Yeah. I'm going through some stuff. Yep. And, uh, everything I, I everything I read is basically saying like, like the, the way they make vinyl records, especially like colored vinyl records that they, they come out of the factory, just filthy. They're covered like in like anti stick stuff. They put them in cheap ass paper sleeves that just like shed. Like you really need to get a good, like you really need to give the records a good clean uh, before you use them. And then, you know, you know, every, every once in a while, just kind of give them a deep clean. And like, there's people that like, wash them in like a sink like they're a dish uh and you can do that all the way up to like really expensive like ultrasonic cleaners like things they would use to clean jewelry but bigger for records uh but those things start at like fifteen hundred dollars and it's just I, I wasn't ready to do that uh mm -hmm. and there's other things like uh there's i'll put this in here uh this is this is a very popular uh cleaning 
cleaning item as well. It's the spin clean vinyl record washer. Uh, but you have to you have to put the the liquid in the bottom and you spin the record like manually like an animal, and then you have to like dry it and let it air dry and stuff. And I don't want to I don't want I I wanted something a little nicer than that. So uh, I found this product by Project. Uh, it's roughly a foot. It's roughly it's like a, a you know a, a foot cubed aluminum cube. Okay. And uh what you do, so it's got it's got uh it's got three switches. It's got three switches. Uh the one kind of just turns everything on and off. And the the the, the first switch controls the uh the motor that spins the record. So it's got, you know, it looks like it's got like a little turntable thing on it. Like you take this little like circular clamp, you pull that off, you slide the record on, you put the clamp kind of back on, it protects the label. And it keeps the record on there. Then, okay. then you turn you turn one on the switch, and the record starts spinning. Uh, you make this solution. It comes with like a record cleaning solution. You you, you dilute it with uh, distilled water. Uh, you spray. You put you put a bunch of put, put a bunch of the juice, and the juice does not smell good, by the way, Drew. The juice smells bad. Uh, okay. <laughs> you put some of that on there. It comes with a, a goat hair brush. You take the brush and you spread out all the liquid. You're getting it deep in the grooves. Deep uh, in the grooves. Deep in the grooves. Uh, the the motor actually spins both directions, so you can like spin it clockwise or counterclockwise. So you get you get everything in there nice and good. Uh, like uh, what I read is like you want it, you want the uh, the uh, record to look like glass. Like you want it to be really shiny. You want to get oh, yeah. lots of liquid on there. You let it sit for a little bit, get, let, let all the, the, the stinky juice get in all the grooves. And then the beauty thing is there's this little what, what's what's hiding. What's hiding in the box is a vacuum. OK, so wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I, I'm confused, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. when I look at when you told mm-hmm. me what this mm-hmm. was, mm-hmm. there's the, like I'm looking at the picture on the project website, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the record obviously is on something that turns, mm-hmm. and there's this little metal arm okay. that sort of sticks out the side. Yes. What isn't clear to me from the picture is 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 it a vacuum? Yes. And so, it's got bristles. So no. So how what? Do, so how does it how does it touch the record? Okay. So when you're cleaning the record with the 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 the, the, ju- the juice and the brush, you, the arm is out of the way. You kind of turn the arm and get it out of the way. Okay. So the arm uh, has basically a little felt. It's like, hold on. (laughs) Let me me get this thing so I can describe it. So the bottom of the arm obviously has a slit in it, right? Because the vacuum, the juice has got to get in there. It's got this. Love, love it. Love a juicy slit. It's got a, (laughs) it's got a soft felt pad that surrounds the, the opening. And that's what touches the record. Okay. Right. So you take the arm. And you, you, you know, you lift the arm, you put it back down on the record and you start spinning it again. And the other switch turns on the vacuum and you let it, the record spin a couple of more times, maybe turn it and reverse it and spin it the other way. And it sucks all of the liquid off of the record, leaving it, you know, sucking the juice off, sucking the dust off of it. Okay. And it leaves the record. Time out. Time out. Just spotlessly clean i'm not a scientist Mm -hmm. but newton's first law of juice says that juice cannot be created or destroyed so where does the juice go uh there's a hole that you basically pour it out it's got like a it's got a reservoir to hold like a half a liter worth of uh juice so so juice comes out of the bottle onto the record juice Uh gets juice gets sucked 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 into the box sucked into the box (laughs) sucked into the box and then you got to empty the juice back out can you reuse the juice uh no because the juice is full of, of nasty stuff but what? But what? Dust? Dust. Yeah, dust. And or like probably, whatever chemicals. And probably bits of record, right? Well, whatever, like, you know, whatever they spray on the record. Because like, when they press it, they don't want the, the, the vinyl to stick the machine. So, like, you know, there's like a non-stick chemical they use. Uh, so you're getting all that off. You're getting all the paper dust. You're getting all the just the, the dust, the nastiness off of it and get a nice, clean, pristine surface. Clean and pristine, mm, man. I will tell you, man. It, when you clean a record, oh, it looks so good. Nice and shiny. Oh, nice and shiny. Oh, yeah. Just spotless, 
spotless. It's beautiful. I wonder if I could. I wonder if I could use that to clean my head. Uh, probably not. Okay. <laughs> uh, you'd ha- your, I like it your, when my head's like nice and shiny. Your head would have to compress <laughs> to a very <laughs> small, uh, like width. That would probably be very, very painful, <laughs> if not fatal. Uh. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. I, mechanically, I get it. Mm-hmm. Aesthetically, I kind of like it. Yeah. Oh, it's it's yeah. It's very basic. It's just an aluminum box to hold the the motor and the vacuum and the juice. Yeah, yeah, and the juice and the juice yeah, and the juice. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I'm very conflicted because mm-hmm. I own I own a project mm-hmm. thing. By mm-hmm. the way, yes, I ha- my headphone amp is a project. Right. Right, and I love it. It's very cool. Mm-hmm. Um. I guess my only question to you is where do you keep this? Because uh, <laughs> you, 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 you have your little shelf for your record player. Mm-hmm. I assume it doesn't go there. Uh, and no. if the juice smells bad, you probably don't want to keep it in your office, right? Well, it's just a, it's in my office right now, just sitting on the floor because I haven't really found a good oh, place to keep right, it. Oh, right, where all the kids can get into it. It's, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's, just, it's, it's right there. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's, it's right there. Yeah, it's right there. Okay, is that <laughs> yeah. is that where it will continue to I don't, be exigent? Or? I don't know. I don't know yet. It'll. I'll move it at some point. I'll f- it'll find a home. Well, I just, uh-huh. I just kind of like it takes a few minutes to clean the record, right? Like you know, mm-hmm. like you, it takes some time. We're not made of time. Do, yeah, you want to do it well. So like, I finally got through my entire record collection. Everything I own is clean now. Uh, so now I can finally like it can. Find a place where it can live until I need it again. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's mm-hmm. let let's let's stop dancing around it, Paul. Mm-hmm. How much? Uh, I spent four hundred dollars on this sucker. Okay. I it's, it's, I was list, I was under. I was under. It's the list price is five hundred. I, I, uh, I was going to say five hundred. Right. Yeah. It just yeah. looking at looking at how this thing is constructed and the materials mm-hmm. and the fact that it's got a very kind of pristine industrial look to it i mm-hmm. i i was in for 500 yeah i'm glad yeah. you didn't get taken advantage of yeah no no they actually sell a bigger one that i guess like if you're cleaning like a whole collection and you need a bigger reservoir for the juice uh they sell a much bigger one a v- bigger version but you know i figured mm. you know i the the, the compact I, the, the vc stands for vacuum compact no actually it doesn't uh <laughs> Yeah, they, VCE they, is a compact and very affordable. Yeah. That's subjective. Record cleaning <laughs> machine. Well, if but, you compare it to like an ultra ultrasonic cleaning machine, it is. It's like less than third of the price. Yeah. But but is this? I I would okay. I I if I close if I look at this and then I I go into my mind palace and I think mm-hmm. who would this be for? Mm-hmm. Obviously, audiophiles because this is a product that exists in 2023. But. <laughs> I have to imagine that back in the day when radio stations were literally spinning records, they probably got really filthy with like human gunk and dust and whatever yeah. else was laying around a radio station, right? Yeah. So I could totally understand the need to keep the records clean in those mm-hmm. scenarios. But mm-hmm. are your records really getting that dirty? Aren't well, they aren't they in plastic sleeves? Well, they come in paper. Now they are. They're in plastic sleeves now. They come okay. in they come in just very cheap paper sleeves. Uh and like the, the paper just I mean, I've seen it before, like you you take a new record out and it's just kind of covered in like like fibers, like because the paper just kind of sh- like shreds or not shreds, but like sheds on it sheds. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I guess like th- they come from the factory, just just dirty. They're, they're dirty. They're dirty, dirty things when you get them. They're dirty. Well, I mean, they, I'm not asking you to eat off of it. <laughs> you, you need to clean them. Okay. See, see, you got to keep the, the, the cleaner it is, the more, you know, accurate the grooves are. And then you're not getting gunk on your stylus. It's a whole big thing. You got to have clean records. Clean, clean. Oh, so it's, I'm over. It's, 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 it's Drew. I will have to say, like, I really like using this thing. It's okay. really fun. It's I get really it, buddy. Fun. It's I get really it. fun. It's really fun. Oh, it's really fun, except the juice smells. But uh. yeah, the juice smells. I don't think you should be using that in an enclosed space. It smells that bad. <laughs> that's probably true. Uh, that's oh. why I was asking, right? I feel yeah. almost like it needs yeah. to be something that you keep. 
maybe in the garage or in the basement. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with, I keep, all, with all the other formaldehyde, right? I keep the yeah. I keep the the juice in a nice little like spray bottle, so it's all sealed up now. Like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Like a little squirty bottle, so I can squirt it out. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, did you have, did you buy more juice? No, no. I've barely used any of the bottle that I have. I still got. I still got. It comes with a. It comes with not a very big bottle, but uh, I still have plenty left, like just tons. So, okay, currently over mm-hmm. on your Discogs page to see mm-hmm. where you're at with your collection here. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like from the last time we visited this page, mm-hmm. uh, looks like you got a king. You got King Woman. Mm-hmm. Great uh, album. Great album. Mm-hmm. We. We- Ouija dude. Uh, Ouija, uh, yeah, you cl- close enough. Close enough. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, Venom prison mm-hmm. yeah. and tribulation. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard you talk about tribulation. Yeah, oh, another good. mayhem album. Mm-hmm. Uh, dark. I think you had Devil Master. I think you had Dark Funeral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, Those I are did. older. So yeah. you got you've gotten five new records since mm-hmm. we last checked in. That sounds about right. Yeah. 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 Because I, I think I think these are sorted in date of acquisition. Yeah, that's that's the default sort. Yeah, you can okay. you could do. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I have no more records coming, so that's like that's every. That's huh. actually that's not true. I have a couple of pre-orders okay. that have not shipped, but the, they, the records don't exist yet, so they don't count. Uh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 got it. Yeah. yeah, the pre-orders. Yeah, so like forty records in, in holding, uh, and a lot of those records I have like there's they're like two LP sets, so like I had to clean more. Like just, I, had, I cleaned so many records. It was so fun. Okay, so so what's so what's your walk me through your process here, mm-hmm. Master Crafter? Mm-hmm. So record record shows up. Mm-hmm. We take it out. We clean it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's step one. And then mm-hmm. it probably gets it probably gets a spin. Uh, not necessarily. I haven't listened to all my records yet. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm I'm still working through them. But like you know, before they go into my collection, so obviously you know, like I'll scan the barcode. I'll add them to Discog. So it's, it's all in there. To, got to got to do that take it out just just kind of look at it you know look at whatever you know that you look at the uh, the 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 cover and when any kind of inserts yeah you put it on there and you clean each side you let it dry uh and then you put it in a uh you take the paper sleeve and you go this is garbage uh <laughs> and you just you just throw that away uh and you put it in a nice anti-static sleeve uh, and then you put the whole album, like the whole like gate uh, in a, another sleeve, right? To keep it from being damaged. And then you put it alphabetically in your collection and there it goes. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so right now then mm-hmm. have you cleaned all of your records? Yes. All my uh, records are clean. Yes. All 40 records have been mm-hmm. put through this machine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. the question then becomes, when will you clean your next record? If none of them are showing up, is it going to be something, and they're all away in their plastic covers, not mm-hmm. collecting dust? Mm-hmm. When will you next use this machine? Uh, when I get new records, or if I ever feel froggy and want to give an, another record a deep clean, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll just do it for fun because it's enjoyable. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, listen, man. We everybody has a kink. I get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Huh. Yeah. I was gonna. It's like, is is it like five spins in a clean? Like, is it? I don't know. We're, 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 we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, five spins. That sounds about right. Yeah. 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 It, I yeah. mean, you're gonna you're gonna take it out. You're gonna mm-hmm. put it on your record player. You're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna let let, it, let let it turn around. Make some sound come out of it. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna put it away. And it, the the well, I don't know. I don't. It sounds like there's not a lot of like residue of the juice when you're done cleaning, right? So oh it's not no. Like there's juice. Yeah. No. It, it all comes off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, this this is this is very cool. <laughs> I really like the spin clean vinyl thing you posted. <laughs> oh, the other the the, the, the yellow that, thing. The, yeah, yeah, that that looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, you got to do it yourself. Got to do it yourself. You have to like dry it yourself. I mean, it's only like it's only eighty. Bu- oh, I say only only, only only eighty dollars. Yeah, but like you have to like. I don't know. The, like. I guess for like the money, this spin clean does a good job. Like you have to like, like you have to fill it up like pretty full because like the record just kind of spins and gets wet. And then there's like a couple of felt brushes that kind of like clean it all off. And then you have to like, then then you have a wet record and you got to like, like either dry it off or put it in a dish rack to, to dry and, mm. Yes. There, mm-hmm. I'm looking at the I'm looking at that Amazon page and I'm comparing mm-hmm. with similar items and there are other devices that look eerily similar to yeah. what you bought. Yeah. 
in the 200 to 300 dollar range yeah i i just I've, everyone recommended the and you know the places where i was lurking like reddit and some other places recommend the that the project that it was just it, it was built well it was good designed it was you know built to last so i just spent the extra money and, and got the you know the good one i guess sure yeah sure mm-hmm. wow yeah I mean, you want something recommended because end of the day, like this thing's going to be like touching your records. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool, buddy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you got a new thing that you like there. <laughs> That's very cool. Oh. Uh, all right. I I actually I actually succeeded in writing Java. Nice. I did it. You did it. I did it. Um, the class that I needed to write worked. Um, it was, it was a very interesting proof of concept. Um, did I talk about the context of why I was writing Java before? You did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I won't, yeah. I won't rehash all that, but what I then needed to turn around and do is I needed to write some Scala. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm okay. a big, I'm a big Java boy these days. I've, oh. I've done nothing but like cut Java code for like the last two weeks when I've been working. Nice. Are you enjoying um, the language no, or no, 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 no. Honestly, the language is fine. It's just the the build tool. There's so many different build tools. There's so many different IDEs. Like navigating that and getting it to work. Plus, like mm. Oracle going to Oracle, and like there's yeah. Open JDK and Java eight and all mm-hmm. these different SDKs. And when you compile it, like is it really going to work both places? Depending on what environment you're working in and what OS you're running on, like yeah. that that has proven tricky. Um, yeah. I made some some big fatty jars, man, because like I have to include all the dependencies. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like not, not nothing like nothing like twenty lines of code that has like that has like two hundred megs of jar, like two hundred megs of libraries included in it. I'm sure. I'm sure that's not the right way to do it, but that was the only way I could get it to work. God, oh. man. And like figuring out like what's going to manage your dependencies. Like I've learned so much. Like about maven and gradle and uh yeah, other yeah. other words that probably are made up i don't know. <laughs> all words are made up too. yeah it's true <laughs> uh, um but yeah my okay. my wife made me a nice little note to celebrate uh the fact that i won at java <laughs> congratulations you yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the big i'm the big i'm the big java winner big java boy <laughs> big java boy i'll be so glad when i can move on from that Oh. I mean, it's it was an interesting problem to solve, right? And uh-huh. I think that there, I think there's legitimate good things that will come out of that. There's going to probably be a blog post that's going to mm-hmm. come out of that. But uh, yeah, I, I I did all the Java, man. I did okay. all the Java on my did Mac, the... no less. Which yeah. getting getting Java set up on an M1 Mac, not super easy, and not because mm-hmm. it doesn't work on an M1 Mac, but for whatever reason, and uh, man, here I go, I <laughs> just. Even using tools like um, Homebrew to install it mm-hmm. and getting mm-hmm. your Java home directory set up the right way was a, an incredible pain in the ass. And, and I, I pray that you haven't had to do that. Not in a long time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was rough. It was rough even in like an Intel Mac days. But getting, you know, figuring out where your libraries are and like, like here's a common example, right? So mm-hmm. I ended up using Visual Studio Code to do all my development and it has integrations with mm-hmm. build tools like maven well you have to install maven which again i can do that with homebrew it's not that hard but where i was running into problems was if i inc- it, there you could basically have a an, a definition file that with your project that basically says like here are the, de- the dependencies that this library is going to have and you start listing them off and it's smart enough to know that if I take a dependency like on Azure core, it knows about its dependencies and it knows about its dependencies and it will just start downloading them to your computer. Right. Cause it's like, you're going to need it to build it. But when I would turn around and build it, they weren't being included. And, you know, I would like try to run the jar and it's like, you know, class not found. And Mm. it was just, it was just like a huge mess. And I was like testing locally and the ultimate destination of a lot of this stuff were Spark clusters in the cloud. And I installed Spark locally, but that's not even remotely the same. 
<laughs> so getting getting that to work was like I ended up not having to like the jar that I had to build locally was like 200 megs, but the jar that I eventually only needed to upload to Azure for it to work was like 20 meg. Oh, okay. Because I because I I what what I what I also found was is that if you t if you take a dependency and you take a dependency on an older version and bundle that up and your code goes to run uh in a you know in your library gets loaded as part of the java you know library path mm -hmm. <laughs> your jars path uh you're going to run into some dependency conflicts pretty quick with other stuff <laughs> that was working already oh <laughs> yeah i mean that whole part of it is still like a big mystery to me about how it does that and mm -hmm. When I look at languages like .NET or Node, like those are pretty straightforward because those yeah. are usually just packaged up with what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? You don't, I mean, other than maybe needing a .NET SDK installed somewhere that you're going to run something, like it's pretty straightforward. Like you can, if you're using um, like NuGet to get a package that you need, like it's going to be bundled up when you compile, right? You're just yeah. going to run that in an environment that has the .NET SDK. Even even then, you can do like uh what do they call it I, I i know the the command line but basically you can create a install that doesn't require to have anything installed it's all self-contained mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty nice are you talking about like one click no not even that like you can just do if you do like a .NET publish instead of a .NET build you can pass it parameters and it will actually package up what it needs for the .NET runtime in, oh yeah, okay. into the into the install, so you can just drop it anywhere. Now, granted, it's like it's a much bigger, you know, yeah. it's it's a much bigger artifact, but you can drop it anywhere and not have to worry about, uh, you know, like what version is installed or what's not. You just it just copy everything it needs is, is right there, so you can just double click that bad boy and go. Yeah, yeah. So there's going to be a there's going to be a probably a repo where my work is going to be nice. and we're probably we're probably going to do like a big a big ass like github repo explaining some of this encryption stuff and how it's how it's supposed to work and it it's been it's been i'm not going to say it hasn't been stressful because <laughs> you know trying to trying to meet a customer where they're at with things that work and then things yeah. don't work the same turns out <laughs> in every environment turns out yeah it's 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 good it's good work it was it was stressful. Like there was a lot of nights where I was like, it was like five o'clock, and I could have just like set it down and and gone and relaxed. But I was like, yeah, I'll just I'll just keep kind of hacking away at this for the next couple hours. I feel like I'm close. Narrator, he wasn't close. Like it would, <laughs> it would just like turn into nine o'clock, and I was like, nah, I'm done. Java sucks. Then I'd go sleep on it, and then you go relax with Elden Ring. I won't oh, wait. No, no, <laughs> no. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's the update there. When there's a blog post, I'll I'll probably I would say a tweet about it, but I, mean, <laughs> I don't know even where I would put it these days. It'd probably show up on the Microsoft website. There you go. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. So I'm actually published in our architecture center now. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Let me uh, let me throw a link in here real yeah. quick. And this is just like people sometimes ask me like, what the hell I do <laughs> in my job sometimes, right? Right. I, I often ask myself that too. Mm -mm. Yeah, same. Um, let me see. Um, reference architect. When? Oh man, did mine already get knocked off the front page? Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, here's an example of some of the stuff that I get into when I'm not fighting with Java, right? So, that there's going to be a link in the show notes, and I'll I'll basically give Ooh. you the short version, but. I basically was tasked with figuring out how customers could run a specific set of software on Azure. Uh, the name of the application is IBM Sterling Order Management. It's actually like, and I'm not just saying this because I got to partner with IBM on it. Like it actually is like a, an industry accepted thing, right? Like very big retailers rely on order management, order fulfillment, order tracking, yeah. on this software and it's traditionally run on large on-premises installations and the fact that it's ibm like you were locked into running this on probably red hat using an ibm db2 database as the back end using ibm mq for service to service messaging and stuff like that and i was okay at all of those things so <laughs> we we had we basically had to figure out how people could run this successfully in azure 
So working with IBM, you know, they have a version of this that is designed to run in Kubernetes because it's all microservices. It's microservices all the way down. Some of them are API, some of them are websites, some of them are just service to service communication. Um, it all talks to like a message broker on the back end. And then the thing that's made this really exciting for for me is that, you know, when I first got involved with this, I thought for sure I was gonna have to figure out like the best way to because really what it turned into is like three mini projects, right? Like which Kubernetes should we use? <laughs> which VM should we use for the database and how to make it highly available? And like how are we gonna run a message broker in Azure, right? So it's like what was really exciting about this is they recently launched support for Postgres as one of their backend database supports. And we have some really, really good Postgres offerings that offer a lot of good performance and scalability stuff. I don't want this to turn into an Azure commercial, but it's like, <laughs> uh, but it was like, you know, I knew enough about Kubernetes to jump in feet first with Azure Red Hat OpenShift, which is our managed OpenShift. So like getting that up and running and then deploying the software on it, standing up the backend databases, uh, figuring out how to run MQ reliably, or there's other services you can run to, but like the, the document you're looking at is basically our architecture center guidance that I, I wrote all of this. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And the, and like there's contributors at the bottom, the, the, the people that are the principal authors are my coworkers. Um, David and Roland are, are amazing to work with. And they're, they were like my peer reviewers on this. And then I worked with people from like IBM and Red Hat and stuff like that. And then in addition to that, there's like all the code artifacts um, that I had to write for this, right? Because we, we not only want to give people like, you know, here, here's how to do it. Like go read this and figure it out, right? But it's also, we also give you like a whole quick start repo, right? So it's like, it contains a bunch of Azure bicep files that if you're the kind of person that wants to run Sterling in Azure, like, hey, go run all this. It'll stand up all your infrastructure. Then you can deploy your shit. So it's like, Again, this was something else that I had to do, right? This is like six months worth of work. Wow. <laughs> like it, yeah, there's there's a lot. There is an insane amount of work here. Hmm. But like, that's an example of the kind of shit that I get into. And then like this Java thing is a whole nother thing. But that's the kind of shit I do these days as like an <laughs> architect, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Fun, fun, not really. It's fun, but it's not fun. Um. All right, enough about me. <laughs> you, you bought more stuff. I, well... I, I've been rocking the iPhone 14 Pro Apple silicon case. Yep. Uh, but I dropped it at some point and like it started falling apart. I was really kind of disappointed with like how like oh, bad okay. it was getting. So I'm like, well, I should probably get another case. And I had sitting there in my wish list the case that you bought for yep. your phone. Uh, so I bought that. It, and it's fine. It's fine. It's it's perfectly it's perfectly cromulent. Like it's, it's perfectly um, cromulent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I just I mean, I'm just a greasy individual, so I don't like the fingerprints that show up on the back of it. It's, yeah, it is getting pretty gross. It gets it gets gross. I wipe it down with some screen mom and it's good for another thousand miles, right? Yeah. yeah. Um but like it's it's perfectly sturdy. I don't like mm -hmm. that the I don't like that the, the camera bump doesn't make it lay flat on the desk. That's the yeah. only complaint I have. Well, that's I mean, I think all welcome to welcome to the the large camera plateau. Like, yeah, but yeah. but like my my Apple, like my last phone had all the lenses and the leather case, like it was just recessed in there. Yeah, even the Apple ones have a little. It's not quite as pronounced, but even the Apple ones have a little ledge around them now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, that's that's pretty. I mean, I guess it does make it a little things. easier to pick up, but I mean, it's a perfectly fine case. And it, and just, it, yeah. What I, color did you get? I got I got the purple. Okay, uh, good man. And I put I put the orange buttons on. Ah, oh, did you? How do you like it? Uh, it's I I didn't I didn't change the buttons. The buttons are they're, it's it's fine. I I wish I uh, would have kept the black ones, but during the process, like I dropped one of the small buttons. Oh no! And, and it, it's it's just gone. It's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. <laughs> it just yeah ashes to ashes. Yeah, <laughs> like it just burst into its component atoms and just disperse <laughs> across my living room. Uh, oh, no. So those, those are gone now. Uh, you know, I have, I have one, I, I want my biggest complaint is so it's, you know, it's, it's the around the screen, right? Like it pops up quite a bit, like to protect the screen. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly getting fuzz trapped in the lip around the case in the screen. That's interesting. Do you put your phone in and out of your pocket a lot? Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. 
I mean, I mean, I just, I never go anywhere, right? So there's yeah. no, there's no need for my phone to be in my pocket. Yeah, my phone still lives I, in my I, pocket. I sort of carry times. it from yeah. room to room. I put it in my coat pocket. I haven't seen a lot of stuff build up inside of there. Yeah. It just but I mean, catch it's fuzz constantly. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's a perfectly fine case. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It, it's it's perfectly like if you yeah. need a case, this case is fine. Six out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, six out of ten. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's it's just a little bit better than average. Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. It, I mean, it looks. I, I like the the color. I wish the back was maybe a little bit more transparent instead of like the smoky gray. But well, well wasn't there nice. wasn't there a variant of it that had a more translucent background? I don't think it came in the purple though. Oh really? Yeah, I will have to look. I remember when we were looking at these. Like there was like six of them that were all similar styled, right? Like yeah, yeah. There was one that was like semi. It was a little more transparent. Yeah, and then like there are so many other companies that. I think are selling the exact same case, but with yep. a different name. Yeah. Like yep. there's so many yeah. just of this particular. They're all style. sourcing them. They're all yeah. sourcing them from the same place. Yeah. For just sure. like everything else. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, Drew. It, what the hell is this last thing in, <laughs> our, right. in our show notes? This, I, I this... clicked on the link, but I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we've talked about toys from our childhood on uh -huh. this podcast okay. before, like mm -hmm. Voltron and Transformers and stuff like that. Yep. I had a dream last night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I like where this is going. <laughs> yeah. Now these these toys we're about to talk about. These mm -hmm. we're about to talk about. I had some of these. Okay. Okay. So that's the only reason I know these things exist. Okay. What we're about to talk about are the it it, it is a product line from the company Tyco, mm -hmm. which. Again, if you grew up in the 70s or 80s, TV was lousy with Tyco RC stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, when you were growing up, Paul, did you have any slot car stuff? I did not. It was not something I was I didn't interested in. No. I didn't no. either. But yeah. I had this. Okay. What we're going to be looking at here for the time remaining is this a series of things called US1 trucking. Truck? They're trucks. Now, they're slot trucks. car trucks. Yeah. So um, I guess the best place to start is growing up all a lot of the a lot of my friends and a lot of people I knew had like um let me see if I can just find a quick one. Um man. Yeah, like here, like I just this was like search result number one. It it was something from Pinterest of all things, but like <laughs> one of these, right? It was like Yeah, I remember yeah. They were like the black plastic mm -hmm. tracking that mm -hmm. like clipped together. Mm -hmm. And what it was is there was like a slot that a, a car would go on. Right. Mm -hmm. And then on either side of the slot was metal mm -hmm. that would feed the motor in the car. And what you what you had is you had a like little gun mm -hmm. and the little gun had like a like basically a potentiometer in it that like when you when you push the trigger it sent electrical current to your rail and like what you what you were essentially doing was trying to like race your cars around this track mm -hmm. and like the basic setups were like figures of eight sometimes with like an overpass sometimes they would go through the middle and you could make them crash um some more elaborate ones had like more turns some had like places where like the cars could crash if you were driving too fast like this, this was this was a whole genre of toys in the in the seventies and eighties. Now, what happened was Tyco released a set that basically built on top of this that were basically meant to be like trucking related. And when I say trucking related, it was mostly like tractor trailers or dump trucks, but there were also fire trucks and tow trucks. But the conceit of this set was it wasn't just like a slot car set where these things went around in like a circle or something. Mm -hmm. These were tracks that you could then also like branch off of, and there would be like loading and unloading depots for your stuff. Mm -hmm. So in the website that I linked you, if you look at some of the, if you look at some of the sets, like big city set, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like there's actually a video in there that sort of gives you a really good example of how this would work. So like your truck would be on the track and it would, it would like go past one of these depots. Well, then you could like on your little control panel, you could flip a switch and it would back up. It would like back up to like a crane mm -hmm. or like something else, okay. right? 
And if you're watching that video on the website, you'll notice that it sort of like backs up against a stop sign that holds the truck in place. But there's like these little spinners built into the track. And that would spin a bunch of gears in the platform that would make like a crane move. And it would like load up the truck. Hmm. And like it would like put like pieces of like little plastic pipe in the dump truck. And then you could like drive that somewhere else and unload it. Right. It was just it was very, very cool stuff. And the trucks lit up like the like the the trucks were powered and they had like little I don't think they were LEDs. I think they might have been incandescents. I don't think we had LEDs back then. <laughs> but but I was like I, I was having this weird dream about playing with these when I was little. And hmm. I, I I just I got out of bed this morning and I was like, man, that was weird. I wonder like if I could find one of those. I would love to have one of those. And like, you know, vintage toys are mm-hmm. a market. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're, they're a market. Mm-hmm. How much do you think of set of these are going oh, for uh, on eBay I, right now? I, I was clicking on the website and it opened up an uh, eBay uh, page. So I got, I done got spoiled, but it's more than I thought. <laughs> Some of like, <laughs> Like sets that are in decent condition, like might have all their parts yeah. are like eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of them where it's just like like a tow truck and a car and it's four hundred bucks. Yes. I yeah. mean, it's sealed. Yeah. And like they had like a G.I. Joe crossover. I didn't have that one. I had, I had like two of these sets because like a lot of these ones look familiar to me. And I actually had the tow truck. But these were these were really these were really good fun. Like you can get just an empty box for forty dollars, by the way. Wow. But these sets were very good fun. I want to say that I had the interstate delivery set. Just looking at the components. Okay. Um. Yeah, like some of these look very familiar. Um. Let's see. What was one of the other ones I had? And like you're you'll see some of these other ones show up. Like some of these other Tyco sets show up, right? Um. Yeah, there was like a whole lot in here. Man, I can't find some of these other ones. Let me go back to I these were so fun. Like I said, I said like this weird dream about it. But yeah, $675 for this. That's wild. And, yeah. And you can see the control panel, like it has like the forward and back with the little steering wheel. Yeah. Oh, I had so much fun with these. These were produced from 1981 to 1985. And I think I got them like in 82, 83. And I was just I was old enough to know how to set them up and play with them, but I wasn't mm. old enough to take proper care of them. Oh, so like I lost right. a lot of pieces, right? right? Yeah. 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 I had the one with the logs. I had the one with the pipes and you could see pictures of the track and like, there mm. were like these, um, I mean, there's no other way to describe it. Like there's like little dongs that come <laughs> off the track. So like your truck would go past them and mm-hmm. you'd have to like reverse into the sections. God, yeah, Cause you need to back up your truck to get loaded you gotta up. Back up the truck in there. Yeah. And like the sets came with like the controls. It would come with a couple trucks and then a couple buildings. And like the whole conceit was you get a bunch of these sets and put them together. And like, I just remember make, having like a two giant of these sets. One. Yeah. yeah. It was so fun. It was so fun, dude. And like, I, I woke up this morning and I was like, I want to go try to find some of these. And then I saw the price and I'm like, Nope. Nope. I mean, some of these that are just missing pictures. Yeah. The mm. 1979 firebird that came with the tow truck. Yeah. Is a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's it's literally a car that doesn't move. Mm-hmm. Like you can't hook it up to the track. Like it doesn't move on its own. Yeah, it's to, literally it just plastic yeah. with some wheels. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. And it and they're like the I, if I remember correctly too, the kits also came with like replacement tires because the tires that actually oh. touched the tracks were rubber, so they would wear out. Yeah. Like you can actually see like the because like they 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 had to grip, right? Because for them to move those little spinners, they had to grip. So like if you're looking at like one of these and you uh, see yeah. and you're looking at one of the dump trucks, like not all the wheels are rubber, just like one of them. Oh yeah. 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 These were so fun. Holy crap, some of these are really expensive. I know, I know, and I want one real bad. I want one real bad. <laughs> Oh. US one electric trucking highway interstate delivery set six hundred and seventy five dollars condition yeah. used. I have that one open right now. I'm looking at it. Yeah. Uh lot of Tyco US one electric trucking yard sign and loaders. Like this is just random parts. And it's four hundred dollars. It was, let's see here. This was the this was the one that had like the the crates. I can't remember if I had that one. I definitely had the one with like the, the like the 
thing that it just dumped into. I don't think I had like, I don't think I had any of the tanker trucks. Like the tanker trucks don't look, I had the overhead gravel loader. I had that. Mm -hmm. I can't, I wonder how much these were when they came out. Yeah. I, I, I'm dying to know. And then there's the US one big city set. I mm. can't tell if that has all its pieces or not. The box is really beat up. Man, these were so these were such cool toys. Have you ever had like a dream like that where you just have a random dream about something from your childhood? Uh, uh I sometimes uh I'll dream about uh did you play with like mask? We talked about this, like mask, right? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. talked about mask, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, that the that uh that set that was like the gas station and like, yeah. Was it even like yeah like i, I would do about that yeah 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 we we, de we <laughs> definitely talked about that mm -hmm. yeah. tyco won night haulers <laughs> now see i think oh i had night haulers because the, the bulldozer <laughs> this one had the bulldozer that went up the hill oh. and then look this this one also has the interstate signs Okay. Oh my God! The interstate signs clipped on the outside, and you could put them there. <laughs> you could put them you there. Put them oh, there. Hours of entertainment, putting signs by the road. Oh, that was so fun. <laughs> and then I would put like other shit that wasn't supposed to go in the trucks in there. I was a bad kid. Of and then I would like, yeah, yeah. Oh, some of these tracks in this set look like they got some cum on them, like or something. <laughs> like, hey. Someone, someone definitely didn't use them how they were supposed to be yeah, used. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think, you're, I don't think you're, I don't think you're supposed to put cum in it. Um, <laughs> title. Yeah. Okay, you got. Can we, can we make that a title? <laughs> we can do whatever we want. Okay, yeah. Uh, what, 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 what do we, what do we say? I I'm don't sure, know. I'm sure. <laughs> We probably shouldn't, but yeah, well, we should. No, <laughs> no, oh. cancel that. No, cancel. Oh. Leave us all in. <laughs> But anyway, I what I also found was really interesting is they had this whole site dedicated to it. Oh yeah, yeah. And I like, said like links to like three D printed parts that like that you can't. I didn't. I didn't look at that. I didn't look at the. I yeah. didn't look at the three D printed parts. Box unloader sign replacement backstop. That's the thing that was the stop sign. Mm -hmm. Retractable boat. Retractable bulldozer mod. Oh, that, oh, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, you had to push the bulldozer back. Oh, my God, it's all coming back to <laughs> me. And then oh. do you see the at the bottom of the page where it's the gear sets? Yeah. And, like, the, the wheel things, like, you the gears would wear out? I mean, because literally, like, you would look at the bottom of these things, and it was just, like, the it was just gears. It was gears all the way down, right? Like, the wheels would turn one gear that would make whatever the thing you were mm -hmm. pulling into spin. I love shit like this. I, I loved shit like this. Oh, yeah, man, look at those nostalgia. Yeah. Print, print, I mean, print those gears. Print those gears. Actually, those might be kind of fun to print. I wonder if they'd be better out of resin or something else. I don't know. And like they, it had the most pleasing sound. It was noisy but not obnoxious. It was just, it was just the sound of gears, right? Like it was just, yeah. Oh, so fun. Man. <laughs> nostalgia. Nostalgia, oh. dude. I, 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 if I could. Can I look at? They only have a link to one set, buy or sell. I think you have to see the current I eBay think, listings. I, I, I I'm buy, pretty I sure I had the fire truck something. set. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I had the fire truck too. The fire truck sticks out in my mind, but I don't even see an eBay listing for the for the fire truck. Mm -mm. There's there's a lot of the GI Joe ones. US one electric trucking GI Joe high adventure set. I didn't have the GI Joe one. What did it come with? Oh, there's like tanks. Thanks. But it's it just looks like the truck is like a flatbed for hauling. Thanks. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, hold on, hold, hold on. There's more to it here. Looks like there's some kind of backstop. Oh, it's all made out of paper. Ugh. And it's got oh, like this weird yeah. rocket. No, this looks like garbage. I would not have had this. Oh, but it has the infamous crisscross track where the trucks could crash. Because mm -hmm. you had to make the trucks crash. Of course. What's the point of What's having moving point? cars around if you don't crash yeah. them? Yeah. Anyway. No, yeah. I just, weird. I know, weird tangent to go on, but I, I I literally put this on here today. It was something I woke up thinking about. So <laughs> thank you for fine. indulging me. Hey, no problem. All right. Uh, Let's get out of here. Yeah. Uh, on, or on the internet. Somewhere. Know, find us on there. Did stuff. <laughs> did, it, did, did, it, did anybody dare email us or no? No, no, no. Nobody's emailing nope, us. Nope, nobody's listening. Uh, some people are listening. I get feedback, just not no emails. 
Cowards. Uh, cowards. You cowards. So yeah, reach out or don't. I don't know. Star. Ring that bell. Whatever. Whatever it is. <laughs> you Give, leave do. us a review. <laughs> yeah. 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 Send me twenty bucks in the mail. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever makes you feel good. Oh, everybody! Thanks for listening.